First reading is the 3785, which is amendments to chapter 95 of the city committee, which is our trash ordinance. Um, I'm going to turn the floor over to Councilman Hancock, since uh, he is on the uh, committee along with, uh, with uh, Mr. Purdue, Mr. Walton, on this, and, and go from there.
5, section 95.31, shall be amended as follows. The, the title to be said section shall be changed to transporting trash to be covered, parentheses, emission of work trucks therefrom. Said provision shall be amended and read as follows. It shall be unlawful for any of all persons who collect trash or garbage and transport the same over the streets of the city to do so without a tarpaulin or cover sufficient to prevent the same from flowing or falling from public or private property or from becoming traffic hazard. Six, section 95.32, penalties and enforcement provisions. Princess A. Anyone who violates the provision of this chapter shall be subject to the penalty set forth in section 10.99 of the Newcastle City Code. B, in parentheses, in addition to the, to the penalty set forth in section 10.99, a person who violates this chapter shall be subject to the immediate citation by the city health officer. It shall be a fine of not less than $100 for said violation. Further, the citation shall provide that the offending garbage trash of the litter shall be removed within 24 hours of the violation. In the event it's, it's not removed, the city may do so, and the violator will be charged an additional fee of not less than $100, which shall reimburse the city for the cost of the removal of such garbage and trash or litter. C, parentheses, it shall be responsible of the property owner and the resident of the occupier of the property to comply with the terms of this ordinance. Any violation shall be assessed against both the property owner and the occupant, or, or the resident, and both shall be considered jointly and severally liable for any fine, penalty, or cost imposed by this action. Any citation for any violation of this ordinance may be served upon the property owner and or the property resident or the, site, the occupant. Service of the citation may be made by posting a copy of the citation or conspicuous manner in the residence of and mailing a copy to the owner to the address appearing in the owner of the records and Henry County Auditor for tax purposes. Seven, any provision of chapter 95 of the Newcastle City Code not amended by change by this ordinance shall remain in full force and effect. Uh, council members, any questions? And I will start out with this. Um, we had two meetings and Mayor, you want to change some things and what about this? There's nothing in there about taking garbage to Buster's. Is that still in That's effect? not in the ordinance. That doesn't mean you can't do that. But since Buster's will make the rules for that, it really didn't make <coughs> sense putting it in the ordinance. Okay. Will uh, that be free of charge if we take it out to Buster's? Mm -hmm. you, the city. It, well, it's not free. Why the not? city will pay for it. Free for the citizen. The, the citizen of Newcastle will not have to pay for it. Right. Right. Okay. And once again, that's kind of up to you all when you make the budget each year. You'll have to budget money for that. And if you don't, then it's a service. But that will be under your control. Um, it's something you can change. Okay. You so that's to. not in the ordinance. And all nothing that. in the ordinance. But if, if this passes, then if I want to take a load of trash to Buster's, I can take it to Buster's with no charge of for me, it is published to <coughs> the city. That'll have to be published. Not by published, I mean, you're going to have to let people know about it. We'll have to put an ad in the paper or... Is that also something know. that is going to be contracted between the city and Buster's? It would have to be. And then, is that something that we will pass as a legislative body? Well, the legislative body doesn't approve, approve the... The uh, contract. The actual contract. Okay. That'll be done with the Board of Works. You okay. will approve it by passing the budget. Sure. Right, right, okay. But that's already... The service is already there when this tax is made. The, the city will pick up toters. What fits in toters only. The citizens have the opportunity, if they're moving, if they're cleaning out the, their garage uh, twice a year, at time change, that week, the city will pick up large tracks. That's the only time. A, a, a week span there. Other than that, through the whole rest of the year, no one is allowed to set a couch out on the curb, the mattresses, chest or drawers, anything else. But here's where I feel like we're going above and beyond. They can load that up, take it off the busters, and if they prove that they're from the city limits, they can leave that at busters 
and the city will pay for it. So you got that already worked out? Yes. The, the other problem I have, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll use myself as an example and all that. My mother's elderly, she gets the paper, she knows about it. Now her son, 35, that's me, I get the paper. But we don't do Facebook or anything like that. What about the person that don't get the paper? What about the person that don't do Facebook? I do have a problem with them side with a hundred dollar fine. They'll be in contact with them. They'll stop by and so say you can't do know. this. Okay, okay. And, and you've got the, it's, you, you just read it. Right. They have is it 24 right. hours to move it or the fine will be assessed immediately. Now I don't know if you want to start like just like the police violation of a part. You could have a period where you give warning tickets. That's the way I read it myself, but I, I do have a problem with uh, someone that don't get the paper, someone that don't do Facebook, and they set it out. This has went on for 50 plus years, and they get a hundred dollar fine. You know, I know it's probably up to Kenny Dale, or it's not in there. It's just a violation of hundred dollars. I do have a problem with someone unaware of something. I I don't think put in the ordinance a provision that if a person doesn't know about it, they won't have to fine. Hmm. If that's the case, no one will ever pay a fine because they'll say they didn't know about it. Right. It's just like what about issuing a warning and issue a first? Warning. You could and, and then we should have that on that record. It really shouldn't be part of the ordinance. The ordinance establishes the fine. If if as a policy you all think there should be a period of time where people get warnings or they should all get one warning, you could have that. You're going to have some people, when you do that, who will know about it, and if we'll they don't get a warning, right. they're not going to pay the fine. Right. I, so, I understand that. But I, I look at the other side, too. The person that doesn't know about it is a right to fine. Well, I'm not, believe me, I'm not here to generate fines for the city. That's not my role. I just want you all to know that the more exceptions you put in it, the less teeth it will have. And what you don't see is when we go to court, these folks always have an excuse. And they always have a reason why they did what they did. And if we put in the ordinance things like people have to first get a warning, or people have to know about the ordinance, the judge is going to have a very difficult time ever finding them in violation of the ordinance. Because there's no way to track that. There's no way to track whether or not a person got a warning. There's no way to find out about it, whether it's your mother or it's a landlord. There's no way to find out about these things. So does Kenny Dell have the option to write a warning? Kenny Dell has, he will have what we call prosecutorial discretion, just like a police officer has a choice whether they want to give a warning ticket when somebody speeds or writes them the ticket. That's what the police officer, or in this case, Kenny Dale, or his appointee, will have the right to do. They have the right to use their discretion to say, this person should get a warning, this person shouldn't. That's discretionary. Because the law is there, and the law is that people are presumed to know about the law. I understand, Jeff, what you're saying. They may not adequately know. But the, the law sometimes is posted and all that, so they have that. But I'm just understanding that person that don't get the paper, that person don't get Facebook, they're used to doing this over a long period of time. I just have a bad... Well, we've said we're going to put it in the water bill. Everybody gets a water bill. It has yeah. a trash can. Everybody gets a water bill. We are going to put it in the water bill. We're going to we're gonna make it as readily available as possible. You're on the committee. I mean, it's put this together. I know, but it's so for you to have a problem with it at this point in time. It's changed a little bit. Well, now, I think one of the... You know, I think one of the worst things we do as a city is communicate for you. Yeah, I just think that that's just my opinion. Um, I think that we could solve a little bit of that problem is when we determine the dates that we're going to pick up large trash. If we, and it might take us hiring a person to do it, I don't know. But going around behind the garbage truck a week, two weeks before, on every, and at least one toter at every house, you stick a, either a sticker or a letter that says this is for picking up heavy trash. Besides Facebook, besides the courier, besides all these different things. And therefore now, besides all those other things, we put it right on right. your toe. I, I don't have a problem with communication. But there has to be a plan, and that's why I'm not sure 
I'm not sure you pass an ordinance until you got a plan to communicate the information. Just my opinion. But now I'm again, uh, as I look at this, the way it's written, it says other heavy trash items will be removed on specific dates announced by the street department, not more often than twice annually. It says not more often than twice annually. That might mean never. I'm for, you know, I'm, I'm for delineating in there when it's going to happen. This was supposed and, to take place at time change. Well, the time change, one of them is in March. You may still have snow on the ground. And the other one's in November when our city workers are going to be trying to pick up leaves. So those two things don't. I'd like to see either three of them. I'd personally like to see four. I'd like to see one the second week in April, one the second week in June, one the second week in August, and one the second week in October. I don't have a problem every 90 days. You know, or, th or just three. I don't know. One or the other. I think, and, it ha and I think it needs to be delineated, not just when we decide we're going to do it. It was seven days notice. Yeah, I think but those two things <coughs> become problematic with communication. Well, and also when you're talking about that, we're talking about our employees should not be allowed to have those days off or things. So we have enough staff to pick up those in a timely fashion. So we're not paying overtime. So we're not, you know, putting the citizens out when we're already putting them out. And also, while we're talking about it, if we're talking about trips to busters, number one, there's no way for us to budget money, know how much to budget money to pay them every year. Um, no possible way. I mean, until we get a year under our belt. So that's a crapshoot. Um, and you, so you're telling me you three sit there and, and, and the citizen can go unlimited amount of times to busters? To busters for free? I mean, they, they go every day. That, I asked the mayor about that, and he said they go every day and all that. That's, I got a problem. That's probably the most items. insane thing I've ever heard, You've ever talked about. That's okay, but you what, you got to go back to what our objective is. Our objective is to keep the trash off our streets. If they have a load of trash once a week, large trash, which they shouldn't have, we can play you know what ifs all day long. I would still rather them take it to Buster's than put it on our streets or in an alley. <coughs> Let's give them the benefit of being able to take it out there. I don't think anybody's going to abuse it. You're, all, you, you're always going to have someone that way. But our objective is to keep it off our streets and keep our city clean. Okay? So I'm okay with that. They're not going to take once a week. We can blow that out of proportion. There will be some abusers. We knew that. We talked about it. And I don't think it's going to increase our, our fees all that much. But we're still keeping it off our streets. I hope they take it out there. Well, so this is something that we're going to have to talk about in the near future. Of, um, we're going to have to up uh, trash fees. It's just that simple. You know, we're paying, we're paying $12, and that's been the same since 2009. If we're talking about this kind of money for our citizens, and there's no way that the, the $12 can sustain the million dollars that is going into that budget every year. Okay. There is no possible way. Okay. Where is the ex where is the extra trash coming from? We're already paying for all the trash that goes to Buster's anyway. Okay? We're already paying it. So I don't understand how that can generate, how the ordinance can generate more trash. We're not only paying for the trash, we're paying for employees to take it out of there. Well, uh, well that's I mean, true, we but everybody in town will be, you know, say a guy in Dunreath wants to clean out. He'll bring it to his yes, father-in-law's or somebody and load it up and not have to do it It's really, it's really the same. Well, I'm just saying, you know that's going to happen. Really no, we have that happen, right? Really we really have, have that problem. problem. The county bring it in the city right now. Sadly, there's no way, and we've had this come up at the city court, and believe me, whatever goes in here is up to you. I don't have any feeling about what goes in here. Not, the mayor never talked to me about this. I took it all from what Lynn sent me, what Jerry sent me, what was in the paper. And I put in here a provision where they had to be, whether it's trash at the street, wherever, it had to be the residents' trash. But we've had cases in city court, the only way 
you can determine that if you're lucky enough to find something in the trash with somebody's address on it. That doesn't happen, it's happened once in the last 10 years, Kenny, that we actually found the trash and it had some addresses on it. It just doesn't happen. So we can require people with bus with our contract to busters to have an ID. And, and we can say this, but it's very difficult, if not impossible, to enforce. It's, I, don't, I don't know how you do it. I, I really don't know how you do it. Because trash is not identifiable. It is, by its nature, mixable. Your trash looks just like my trash. I mean, it, it doesn't change. I think, I think we have to divorce ourselves from the busters thing, though, to a degree. I think we have to divorce ourselves from the busters thing to a degree to get this ordinance done and then address the rest of it. If we, and I'm going to make a motion right now, and that way we'll kind of find out where everybody stands. So I'm going to make a motion, and number two, what, what do you make a motion? Well, then you yeah. discuss the motion. Okay. I'm going to make the motion to strike uh, in the first sentence from the word specific in the first page, number two. Okay. Where it says, other heavy trash items will be removed on strike specific dates announced by the street department not more often than twice a day such as citywide such citywide heavy trash pickups will be scheduled and announced at least seven days prior to pickup i'm going to ask to strike that part from specific pickup and add in there other heavy trash items will be removed on four specific dates during the second week of april june august and october second week of one more time. Second week of April, June, August, and October. And that's my motion to amend. April, June, and October. April, June, August, and October, every two months. I'll second the so, so. I mean, we still discuss it. Now we can have discussion. We still discuss it. Or one week. So we're going four yeah, times a year. Yeah, one week. Yeah, four times a year. One I mean, week. That can be announced January 2nd right. every year. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Just like the time change could be announced. January 7th. And after we do it, the, a few the, seven, years. the seven days prior, I, I, I don't think. I just came up with that. So you had to know in advance. Well, I don't think that can be announced a year, year in advance. I part, of the, part of the discussion of this whole thing was making sure we come up with the principle times that people would read it. That's the idea of change is an easy suggestion, easy choice. Okay. Whatever we come up with, I don't want it to be a thing where it is this day or these dates this year, then the following year it changes again. Well, this will be the same every year, second week in those months every year. Okay, but I just want to make sure, because as you said, communication is a big deal with this. Very important. Another thing that I've heard from those that I represent is this fact that they want curbside pickup. Well, some were okay with twice a year, some would have liked it more. But the option that really put me over the fence with this is being able to take it out to customers. I go out there once maybe every five years. I think it's going to be nice if I have to drive up the hill pick up nails in my tires, slash my tires as I go back to the dump, because this will be in the front, correct this room. It'll show you two pieces of ideas, what we discussed, that they're a citizen of, of the city, and they can unload it in the dump. So this isn't taking your trash out there. Well, these are large items. I'm not against busters, not forward or against, I haven't looked at it. But, and I think this is separate. Well, I'm just. Let me finish. Okay, well, I just got uh, you. I thought you had finished. Okay. They have an opportunity to take it out there. And the whole idea was behind this, you know, we're going to have to play this through for a year, maybe two years. My thinking is that those who have the ability to take it out there, that's going to take away from the curbside. Hopefully we won't have that much 
on those two, three or four days, whatever we decide to do. But we're going to have to wait and see what happens. We're going to have to fill it through. This mayor is what? $257,000 for this last year for just large trash pickup, correct? How'd you come up with that number? Christy, get to 254 Two fifty-four eight sixty-five. That's employee salary and stuff. Everything, everything. So you're still going to have employee salary. That's going to be there no matter what. Okay. And that—that was the thinking behind all this. As a representative of those I I represent, I just want to make sure that we have something that's not going to confuse me. Because I get confused with. So, I, I think it, it needs to be as simple as we possibly can get it. We, we have people who don't have the ability to take it out there. That was discussed. Well, seven, the, what, what's in there in that first couple sentences is about, could be about as confusing as you'd ever want to see because it says here that any time, basically, the street department says, okay, seven days from now, we're going to pick up large trash. I mean, that's what it says there in that sentence. And I, I don't understand what you have against specific dates because I think we need specific dates. I'm getting you specific dates, second week in April. The Why did you week. want to take out that term specific well, dates? It, 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 but, those, but specific dates announced by the street department, not more often than twice, they can announce those dates and those dates can be any date they want. It can be no dates, the way that is worded right there. I mean, don't you, I mean, I think he's still talking specific dates, but more the four times in April. More than we're able to tell people ahead of time, right. these are going to be the dates It'll still instead be specific of, dates, because like you said, I think no it's important what, to not change them. No matter what the dates are, they'll be, they'll be announced January 2nd. I mean, uh, well, it year needs to say, maybe it needs to say that in there. It, it very well can. But, but, but it can, you know. That's a, that's, if we do that, do we have to go back every... If we do it as it's worded, then every now, year you've got to set the specific dates. We have the option. We get, okay, we have the option. That's an option. We don't have to rewrite the ordinance because we've allowed, we've allowed ourselves to have the option to change that. We don't know that that the, the spring and fall of the time change is going to work. We do know this. It is a date that everyone can remember. And you talked about communication. That's exactly what we chose, why those two times were brought up. Because communication should, should be much more but I think these are dates so, that you can communicate and they can be easily remembered too. Okay, and my, my problem with the four dates a year is, okay, we're a world, what's our objective? We're trying to keep our city streets clean. If we start giving them four weeks out of the year, we just doubled what the committee well, thought was a good time frame. I think then it gets really confusing. But in the ordinance, four times a year. In the ordinances that is written now, the mayor and the board of works have the right to say no pickup. Well, here. that wasn't my intent. I'm sorry, Rex. I could change that easily. I just thought I'm, I'm just saying the ordinance says now. So I mean, we could have no pickup now. But I think four dates gives us the opportunity to then maybe see what happens if we're going to do the thing with busters. Maybe see what happens. Maybe it gives us the opportunity for people to get rid of their trash. And I see this four weeks of trash <laughs> city. Well, I'm sorry. I guess we can vote yeah, on the amendment and go Well, on I, I'm thinking that we should start just the twice a year because if you start off giving them more, you know, it, that's just going to increase, and you're already letting them take. So, do you want them to do it on in March, March 11th, and in November when we're supposed to be picking up leaves? It, is the leaves included in this? No, no. But that's when that's when the two dates that have been mentioned are March. 11th, which is when it could still be snowing, the weather's bad. All right. In November. That, all right. The dates I don't like, yeah. but I still think we should make it twice a year instead of four times a year. Those dates were only picked because it was the most common. I mean, I know we should remember, but they're not very good dates for our for the city or our workers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Why we run the truck? You're supposed to check your batteries in your fire smoke detectors. Time 
I just want to make sure people know. That's I did. That's my main thing. point that's for going this way. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's the main thing. Can I draw attention to the fact that right now in the ordinance, it's worded, and correct me if I'm wrong, because we just discussed this, um, not more than monthly, but we're picking it up when it's out, which is admirable because of the focus, curve appeal. I think going from, I, I don't know, I think two is pretty stingy um, for people that, like you said, are used to 50 years of doing it. I think it's a good compromise of cutting that down. I think either way we go on this, you're going to have people like Mr. Du said that take advantage um, and you're going to have people that leave it out anyway. Uh, there's a lot of gray area that I have and Mr. Copenhaver addressed some of that with how will we know whose trash is whose, um, but also how will we know that a tote is specifically for that residence. I mean, we don't have an inventory or a barcode system set up. Um, I also, in this amendment, since I've got everybody's attention, I'll take it, uh, the totes, Can we, I don't, let's go the pickups, well, that's part of the large trash amendment. Let's go through that. Okay. We will come back. Okay. I, well, I would be. I'm, I'm willing to second. You did second it. Yeah. But I would be willing to amend this to second week in April, second week in July, and second week in October. I mean, once in the spring, you've cleaned out. Once midsummer, people have garage sales. They end up with stuff that they want to get rid of. And once in the fall, I don't think that's unreasonable. I mean, I think that we. Uh, we want to take it away all of a sudden, and people have been used to doing it carte blanche, and that's that's not easy. It's like we go on a diet, and you've been used to eating all your food all the time, and all of a sudden you stop. I, I agree. I, so I'm going to uh, go ahead. So could we say, Rex, after announced by the street department, on three dates, something along the line of uh, the second week of the three months that you suggested? Yeah, basically that's what we're going to leave the specific dates term in there? I don't know if it makes you happy, Ken. So I think we should take one and, and get our verbiage. What are the three months? Uh, the three, I said, were April, mm -hmm. July, and October. So I'm going to, I am going to make the motion to, I am going to amend my motion to make it uh, April, July, and October. Okay, now you're going, will amend now you're second, going when, when are you going? April? Second week in April. Yep. Second week in July, now, July. Second week in October. I feel like that way you're in October you're you're pretty much getting done before you have leaves coming down because the guy the street car's got to be working on leaves. I agree with the mayor. Yeah, I don't want them out there. I'm gonna make a motion to table this. Um, we had two meetings on it and the third meeting was cut short because of the meeting and we didn't have a lot of time to discuss some things, so I'm going to make a motion to table this. Well, I think we're talking about can numbers. Can well, we I just discuss say, I think a little it's more just to get the ideas done? We truly have a motion on the floor. So the tellers were talking about, in June, talking about those. So mm -hmm. I don't know on that. Do you have enough tellers to go around with two people in the city? A month ago, we did. We talked about the tellers. We've got the tellers in. Uh, we don't have enough to do for everybody, but we've got the tellers in. But we've got to look at. Some people have some of the original toters and they're in great shape. Now some people have toters a year ago and Liz already broke in and they'll take care of them. We have a motion by favor. We need to take care of this motion. Um, we have a we have a motion and it's been amended and the second for the April, July, October. Just to change that part. Just to change that part. So, so instead of not more than twice a week, put those times in. We have a motion and a second by Aaron for that amendment. Go ahead, Mayor. So, so, first talk about four days, but it's been amended to three days. To three. Second week in April, second week in July, and second week in October. Okay, any other questions or comments from the council? My comment is, it's still confusing. Are we going to say we can, we get we can pick it up three months three weeks out of the year? When are those weeks? It's still confusing. I think we should stay with the twice a year, the week after time change. I 
that's all I'll say. Any other questions? Just March, November. I don't change my box because I have a phone. <laughs> so, I mean, is that March, November? Yeah, March, uh, this year, March 11th. And then I didn't get the exact date of the Okay. So, your motion is just to, it's not for the ordinance 3785, it's just, no, it's just, just to amend it. that section of the ordinance to re pick it up the second week in April, the second week of July, the second week of April. <clears throat> Every year from now until some other council. Second week in April. I'm just saying, you just said I already forgot. Well, <laughs> work on it, bud. The other question is fine. Roll call vote, please. And, th and this is just on. Just that. Just on. Well, so now, before we do this, can I just ask, and this is just spitballing here, because I know Mark likes it. Um, <laughs> is January pickup date completely out of the question? You got to think post Christmas is a, is a time where I see a lot and I have a lot having two or three kids but I, and that's why I asked that because I know that there's going to be snow on the ground maybe I don't know, does that make it more difficult I don't think that's a lot of people say bag down right they're still going to have to run them around picking that stuff up right okay all right you won't have to listen you're going to go to the bag on the ground. Side them in the court. They're one-armed guys, and they've got to drive one-armed. Well, and that's again with the toters and all that. You know, if the, if the ordinance says two toters and they only have one, they have a lot of these. Right. It cites them like they have it laying on the ground. Right, right. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, get no, to this that. is not before, but I can't hear anything about toters. This really doesn't change the current situation on toters. The only change I made on the toter provision is Jerry asked that it uh, be spelled out a little better, that the city owns it and they should stay with the property, which has always been the case, So, and that we eliminate the small ones. Okay, okay. And Aaron, well, we can get to... Let's you probably weren't old enough to remember this back in 2009, but we had to fill out registration cards and turn those back in. I chose to only have one large tote. Right. That's all I, I've ever right. needed and I've ever needed. Well, we can get to totes after those, we do this. The kicker is, those were never registered. Right, right. So what they are doing now, when they take toters around, they are tracking. Okay? So oh, well, yeah, now. Now they are. Right, right. Well, well let's, let's do this amendment here, this motion, and we can talk about totes, because I've got a personal vendetta against the squirrel in mind, so. Roll call vote, please. Mary Brunson. Yay. Jeff Hancock. Yeah. I'm going. Yes. Aye. Jerry Walton. Yes. I think it's good compliments. Aaron Dickett. Aye. Mark Covert. Aye. But I want to say, this has nothing to do against what Lynn and, and Jerry oh, no. and Jeff came out. I'm telling you, that they worked hard on All right. this. They worked very hard on this. And um, I like the compromise. Nay. And I want to say I think you guys did a good job of narrowing down to a point where we could talk about it. Because before it was yes. like a yep. mess. So I appreciate that. So I vote yes. I'd like to make a motion. But hang on one second. So, yes is or five and the nays are two two. The table ordinance number thirty seven eighty five so we can have the writing properly in there. Well, can we maybe go back and we should finish discussing it. We can finish discussing it. You finish discussing it. Aaron's got a couple yeah. things. Let's wait on the okay. table. Looking at uh, section three today on the city shell on or before December 31st, 2009. Is that date? That date's in the current ordinance. So I just can we say that? And that was the original date that they picked, so I didn't change it because nobody asked me. Is, is we can, I can take that, that out. Is it, see I still think the city should have the ability, let's say tomorrow we would get something that from a supplier that says we can get you these trollers that will work for your equipment. They're a little different in size, but they'll save you half the money. We should be able to do that. That's why I thought that first pair of 
first sentence was important to stay. Exactly. But I can take out that second part. The 96 gallon part. Yeah. yeah. Is there that's, a that's with that? Yeah. yeah. And then down in section 4A, should a uh, term city help? Officer be changed to city building inspector. If you and go, the inspectors appointed. You have to read that with section one. They're really the same, unless you would ever in the future want to have a city health officer. I, I just wanted to so make that. That's what. Any time it refers to city health officer, since we don't have one now, it's the building. Okay, inspector. so that took care. That's what I wanted to make sure. Okay. I wanted to ask one thing about and. Yeah, I'm fine with what it says, but um, I know there have been more than, and at least I know at least four times when people have called me, somebody has came and done, like somebody from, they're pretty sure the house <coughs> across the street went over into the lot that they owned beside their house and left the track, left a bunch of trash and heavy trash there. What are we, I mean, are we going to? Find the people that own the lot because somebody else is that going to be up to the discretion of the building believe inspector? Me, believe me, that's got to be up to the building inspector. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes in with that excuse. Right, I'm sure. And if you don't make the property owner responsible, period, you're never going to be able to cite anyone. I wasn't, I'm not, what yeah, for changing, I just want to get I know it doesn't seem fair. We had people like that. And but you've got to leave that to Kenny's discretion if you want to enforce that. Because then everybody, believe me, we've been doing this for years, and people always come in and say, I didn't dump that there. And so the ordinance is really the I'm owner's responsibility. I've had someone call me about that one. I've contacted Kenny, and he's gotten the right one. I mean, it's... Just thought I'd bring it up. And I need to say, too, what is saying to me if you really help us out with this on the toes? Made his ears turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think he was here. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't on him. You know, there are things that go on, and I'm going to take his offer to cut the right direction. There are things that he brought up for us as a committee that we had no idea about. The now, when you find an engine block of one of our toners, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you what's that? Energy block for one of the toilets. I did in Belmont when I first started on the truck years ago. Okay. But with Brian's input, that helped us come up with some of this stuff. I want to make sure that I'm going to find a body now. Anything else, Aaron? Um, I, I, from my notes, from when we first started talking about this, I'm glad that the small tote has been removed from the ordinance because I know we're not providing those. And remind me, my fingers, how much is it per tote? Does anybody know? She, I've asked her about three times. For us to buy them? Yeah. Like if somebody says, hey, I need a new tote, but we have to order more totes. Hey, okay. we have to order 150 at a time or 125 at a time. I want to say in the neighborhood of in between 70 and 90 dollars. Okay. I thought that, yeah which makes sense to, I was thinking 80. I've got an unpopular decision of not providing a second tote for free, charging maybe a little extra for a second tote. Um, and then also, I think the last meeting, when we were just talking about it, we had talked about adding the uh, verbiage, no more than two totes per residence. Anybody else remember that? Um, Kenny, I think that was Kenny sent that out in an email. Oh, there we go. Okay. But, yeah. I'd really like that. Well, no. What's in the ordinance is what's here, which is you get two toters. If you want more toters, you have to rent them, which wouldn't be right for the city not to, to oh, rent yeah. a toter and not right. pick up the trash in it. So you have to decide, I, you know, if you want to say... A residence is limited to two toters. We can do that. I'm pretty sure there's a limit on there. Well, I just keep going back to, and I can't remember who, on somebody on this side. You have residents that have six two toters, but they're paying an extra fee for those toters right now. But are now we 100% sure that, on that? I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a that Originally, when this was set up, and it's maybe, maybe never was followed, 
but nobody knew how many toners people would need, and we had the small ones then. And then it was decided you were allowed two, one large and one small, and you could rent additional toners. Okay. I don't know if that was ever done, but that was what the ordinance said. Now, if you wanted, and it never placed a limit on a single family, a multi-family. We did. Well, and I wondered, because I've talked to people that have multiple large toters, I'm pretty sure their utility bill is the same as mine. Um, and so that's one thing that, you know, goes back to the inventory and all of that to make sure that we're covering our steps. But I'd like us to see, or like to see if we're tabling this. I'm not going to make a motion because it seems like it could be pretty open-ended, but I would like to see more discussion on how to limit those totes because I know some people are getting them a lot and other people are not. I know Liz is in with that too. So I don't know if we add something, a provision about lids. We reorder lids. Right. Which is better than reorder totes. Can, can he count how many times you reorder, reorder lids? Some people, they would be paying for four. Right. Some people ain't paying for four. Right, right. When they first started this, they just throw them out of there. Right, right. Well, and that's where, I mean, Some I don't. Some paying for four totes. I don't know. You know, we've talked about summer internships, I mean, that'd be a good way to use some city management or government management interns with that project. Figure out a way to make it to where it's good for the administration and we know where everything is and we can assess the billing correctly um, and all of that. I don't think how you can enforce anything when you don't have, you know, for instance, I have four toters and I'm not paying for it, which I don't. Mr. Toter has one. You know, and this infected pole has two, so you get an idea of where we're at on this at all. I mean, it's not right for, you know, one resident to pay for soders and another resident has three, and they're not paying for that fee and all that stuff. And one other thing we talked about here, Jeff brought this up. I request that second toter. There's not one available. The trash is picked up next week, and I have to set my extra trash out there. Should I be fine? That's, that's, yeah, but doesn't fit the toters one. You know, no, I, I'm just well, saying, I'm not, I don't think that's as part of the. That's part of the fun. Yeah, it doesn't fit the toters. Yeah. I've always been told I'm on a lid. You're on a lid? Yeah, if I, order a, if I order a lid, which I'll have to go back and look, I think I have, I'm on the wait list. I don't know how long that waiting list is. But I just want to give you a little bit of Everybody done? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to change that to two toters per residence or we got I'd, just, I'd say leave that and everybody can think on it and bring ideas back next meeting. <laughs> so at this point in time, we've had a motion that this be tabled. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second. Motion, second. Real call vote, please. Gregory. Aye. Jeff. Aye. Jerry Welch. Aye. Aaron Dickens. Aye. Mark Cogar. Aye. Lynn Perdue. Aye. Rex Beckett. Aye. Motion carries 7-0. All right. Next we have a resolution, 02052018-1, um, resolution authorizing application submission uh, and local match commitment for the city of Newcastle. In the end, recognizes the need to stimulate growth to maintain a sound economy within its corporate limits. And as the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 is amended, authorizes the Indiana Office of Community Rural Affairs to provide grants to local units of government to meet housing and community development needs of low and moderate income persons. And whereas the city of Newcastle, Indiana, has conducted or will conduct public hearings prior to submission of the application to the Indian Office of Community Rural Affairs and public hearings to assess housing, public facilities, and economic needs of its low and moderate income residents. Uh, therefore, be resolved by the Common Council of the City of Newcastle and the that one, the mayor is authorized to prepare and submit an application for the land planning to address wastewater improvements and to execute and administer a resident grant, including the requisite general administration and project management contracts and agreements pursuant to regulations of the Indian Office of Community Rural Affairs and the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development to 
the city of Newcastle, Indiana, hereby commits the regulars of funds, local funds, of the amount of $150,000 in the form of wastewater operating funds as matching funds for said program. Such commitment be contingent upon the WDW funding from the Indiana Office of Indian Affairs. Uh, we need to give them day now the public hearing. Anyone wishing to uh, uh, to present testimony to the council uh, uh, <coughs> regarding this will be given an opportunity to come forward. Perfect. Thank you, Council. My name is Mike Klein here with Klein Peter Consulting Group. Sorry, I've been fighting a cold here. Uh, I'm an OPRA certified grant administrator and the person putting your application together. Uh, the purpose of the hearing tonight is to discuss the city's application for grant funding for the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs. We'll be applying for a grant of $600,000. It will require a local match of $150,000 from the wastewater operating funds for a total project cost of $750,000. We submitted a proposal in December to the Indiana Office of Community or Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs. Uh, they were reviewed our proposal and a site visit was just, uh, conducted on December 21st. The mayor, uh, Mr. Eric Ogle, the CDG director, and Susan Ripley um, and RQAW were at that meeting. They reviewed our project and our project is eligible to receive. Our application is due this Friday, December 9th. We want to make sure that citizens of the city are fully informed and have an opportunity to voice any concern or support for the project or ask any questions they may have. The application is competitive. There are 21 other uh, cities, counties, or towns competing against us. Uh, traditionally, they funded about 10 to 12. They have not released how much money is going to be funded this time, so we're not sure. This is a third kind of quick turnaround on the round. So I'm going to turn it over to Trent with RQAW and tell you uh, about the project and what specifically we're looking to do. <coughs> Thank you, Council. Um, so, <clears throat> just a couple of uh, few items that we're looking to do as part of this project. Um, first and foremost, is a blower replacement um, at your existing treatment facility. Um, you have a couple blowers right now that feed both your aeration tanks and your sludge holding tanks. Um, this provides uh, little to no redundancy uh, in case uh, there's mechanical failure with the existing blowers. So, we're proposing to add two new blowers at the treatment plant. Um, turbo style blowers, um, they're high efficient blowers. Um, top of the line. Uh, and with that, we're going to have several associated improvements. Um, air piping for the blowers to the uh, sludge holding tanks, both the very and within buildings. Um, we're going to have electrical improvements. Um, so, uh, to provide power to your turbo, turbo blowers. And we're going to have uh, added skating control uh, with the blowers as well. Provide a little more automated uh, operation uh, for your operators. Uh, try to make it a little bit easier for them uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the other component to that uh, that we're looking to uh, replace as part of this project is uh, the existing grading within the facility. We're proposing to replace all of the grading within the facility um, due to some ongoing safety concerns that have been associated with it. Um, we have some I-beams that have failed uh, in certain cases. Um, we have some concrete tankage that needs to be repaired where the grading is currently um, that could be uh, potential issues for your operations and maintenance staff. So we're proposing to put for, <laughs> replace all the grading within the plant. And then the uh, last uh, improvement we're looking to make is uh, in a few locations as well. We're looking to uh, replace some existing handrail. Um, again, uh, safety concern uh, that's been uh, addressed to us uh, by the operations and maintenance staff. Um, so we're going to, there's some select locations that we've identified throughout the plant that are uh, the most severe and uh, we think will be the most beneficial to you this time. Anybody have any questions on the project? And as we look at this $750,000 worth of repairs, it really totals up to, we have about $2 million worth of repairs that we need to do to our, update our facility. But uh, this is what the grant allows, so this is, what we're, this is a starting point for us. And we have a lot to upgrade the plant. It's, it's upgraded in a desperate way. It's just a starting point. April, I think it's April 8th. April 8th is 
Okay, give me one second. I got on the channel. Here's a Thursday, so it's going to be April. April 5th, I'm sorry. April 5th. Any other questions or comments from the council? Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. At this time, if there's any members of the public that wish to present testimony or evidence uh, or ask questions regarding this project, please come forward, state your name and address, and uh, present your information. Uh, Mr. President, I see no one coming forward, so I think you can declare the public hearing closed. Thank you. We'll close the public hearing. Motion to accept this resolution. I'll second that motion. Motion made and second. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote, please. Mary Burrington? Aye. Jeff Holmhouse? Aye. Jerry Rolfe? Aye. Aaron Dickens? Aye. Mark Coburn? Aye. Lynn Perdue? Aye. Rick Speckman? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. That concludes resolutions and ordinances. I'll turn the floor over for committee reports. That's what we're bringing to you. I have a couple of questions. Um, there between 21st and 20th Street on Green Avenue, there must have been a water meet right there. And there's still barriers on the barrier there in front of me. Kind of, you know, messing with traffic. I was wondering how much longer that's going to be there. Well, we've got over 30 of those throughout the city and until uh, the concrete trucks can come in and force the concrete and put some asphalt down. Kind of mercy of the mother nature right now. Okay, and then but I we're trying to keep gravel in to where it's going. Well, you, you have to drive them to the around. That's good. Okay. At this point in time, that's good. Okay. And then I had uh, um, Mr. Ballinger over on uh, Plum Street. Um, he uh -huh. called me and wanted to know um, what they found out about the right of way behind his house where the old nursery was. He said that there was somebody over there that took a look at it. But I think it might be like where an alley's supposed to be or something. But people have been driving back there and it is awful. There's ruts and everything. But, um, if it's really an alley, shouldn't there be gravel or something? It's not an alley, it's just the right way. But some of the neighbors there have turned it into an open alley. It's, it, was that city owned? Okay, so is there anything that can be done with people driving through there? I mean, it's there is ruts in there. That are we can cable it off with the drunk driver right around the cable. So we get some letters. There's some letters on that. And all the connecting property owners or people? Uh, yeah, to the one that we're complaining about. Which, uh, the one that's in the front, the garage in the back, and the guy with some garage. I don't, I haven't been back right now for a while. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. I appreciate the chuckle for our big bill, the way we're committed and all that. I know you have many uh, uh, trash committee people in the meeting trying to get this verbiage language correct and all that. I won't be here next week.
Yes, concerns. Yes. Sin to the three of us. Okay, yes. I think. Concern or suggestion or concern or suggestion. Maybe within a week. appreciate Lynn celebrating with me last week. I finally had the daughter in the family. So I'm a happy person. You may have made me snacks. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got a little kid on there. Uh, Brad says it's as cold down there as what it is. Oh, it is. Right. <laughs> I have pictures of proof. And nothing really All right. Thank, Thank you. Uh, first of all, I appreciate the trash committee and the discussion that we could all have here. I mean, I've explained it multiple times to other people that, you know, this is the table that we mold things on, and sometimes it's not as pretty as it might look. Uh, but then also, I had the opportunity to tour the water treatment plant and uh, the wastewater plant in the same day on a cold day, and uh, Mr. Swoblin took me on the long tour in my dress shoes all over the property but it was I mean enlightening this ochre grant I mean is the things that those guys do out the wastewater treatment plant with what they have as far as resources it is a testament to the knowledge and the experience that those guys have and you just can't buy that so and the same goes for the water treatment won't sound as ignorant in answering questions uh, other than that that's all I have nothing uh, I just want to acknowledge that I'm not going for the Miami Vice look tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Fort Henry County movement that uh, a local church, First Night Methodist in the place, has uh, 49s. And if what it's really about is to highlight all the positive things that are happening in our community, uh, businesses, individuals, organizations, it's so easy to talk about the negatives. Uh, they decided that we want to promote the positives. So that's if you see bumper stickers, magnets, t-shirts, or anything like that, it's about to be for Henry County. And if you have something you'd like to share, they have a Facebook page. You can call Shannon at the First United Methodist Church and they'll be on the Facebook page. We've over 60,000 uh, likes already. Also, the Barnett Company. Like buying a picture. Um, Barnett Company, Jennifer Barnett, on uh, 14th Street. She's selling in her, in her shop.
Brandon Edstein graduated from Police Academy on Friday, and both officers finished in the top 10 academically out of the 149 uh, graduate, graduates of the 213 class. Who's that graduating? Who's that finishing as far as the school? <laughs> uh, we're at the 33rd. And she'll be? I again want to thank all the city employees. I mean, from the three special services, fire, police, EMS, to the street department, the water department, the one arm bandit, the heavy trash guys. Uh, a week ago, Monday, we had three different departments filling potholes. Uh, departments that don't even have trucks to fix potholes. We were out working on potholes and this time of year. Uh, they were working on those same potholes the very next Monday and the very next Tuesday. I mean, it, it's just impossible to keep them intact this time of year, uh, especially with the, the cold weather the way it is. So uh, we can't give them enough thanks, enough kudos to, uh, of what they do for our community. They, they've stepped up to the plate, and they're working their tails off just to make sure that we look for them. Uh, also, I want to say the, the park board is starting a citywide uh, water cap Anytime you drink a, a bottled water, we're trying to raise a few thousand pounds of, of plastic to, to get uh, uh, park benches for the parks. We've had some of them donated. We've had some of them uh, financially say that, that they'll take care of the finances if we can raise bottle caps. The seats are around $225 a piece. And it, it, I don't want everybody taking in just a, a baggie of caps, but a, a trash bag full of caps. The three fire departments, the three fire stations, you can turn your your, your bottle caps into any of the, the fire departments. So uh, that's all I have at this point in time. At this point in time, if uh, there's any citizens wishing to appear before the council, this is time to step forward and present your name and phone number and address. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.